Hey guys, it's Toady. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be playing a game called Who is Mike? Alright, let's get into it. Ugh, my head. My nape throbbed with a sudden, persistent pain. Dizziness came and went like a slow trickle of sweat. What? It was evening. The curtains were closed and the sound of blood thumping in my ears made the silence malignant. I was in my house, yes. But I was disoriented. Something felt amiss. There was a certain creepiness that made the hairs on my arms prickle. I blinked at my surroundings. My glasses. Where are they? D did I bump into something, or...? Stay back, whatever you are. Even before I heard this, his voice, I had felt the presence of someone else in the room. It justified the awful feeling in my gut. Just don't move. Oh my god. There was a stranger in my house. He held a bat with his outstretched arms, maintaining the distance between us. Get back. I didn't know what to do. I opened my mouth in several attempts to say something. Don't hurt me. Please leave. What do you want? In the end, I just stood there in dumb silence, stewing in my own nervous sweat. What is he even doing here? If he was a robber, he picked the wrong house. Do I know him from somewhere? I squinted at his blurred shape, trying to replace the man's fuzzy edges with something more tangible. He looks... I stepped closer. The man waved the bat in alarm. I, I told you not to move! Ugh. Did he just shiver? He was acting way more upset than me, considering he's the intruder in my house. It might be a foolish thing to say, but he didn't seem dangerous at all. Just go away. Please. Please? He continued mumbling to himself, gasping big gulps of panic breaths. Uh-oh. Hey, uh, I think you're having a panic attack. <laughs> I don't know what I'm feeling. Try breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that, I would have... More than one nickel. <laughs> Damn. Did I actually just give breathing exercises to a trespasser? I guess Sarah was right. My kindness will be the death of me one day. In any case, the stranger relaxed a good deal. I gave him a small, unsure smile. You alright? What? What are you? Um, sorry? My name is Mike Jansen, and you're in my house. Who are you? Never mind. I think I lost my glasses somewhere. If you let me f find them, I'm sure we can sort this out. You don't seem like a bad guy. The man dropped the bat to his side and let out a long, forlorn sigh. Under the coffee table, probably. Thanks. I fumbled around the floor, praying for dear life the stranger wouldn't attack me while I was vulnerable. But he just stood there, shuffling his feet and mumbling to himself. He wasn't very threatening, really. I'm sure the poor guy's just confused. Also, there was something familiar about him, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. It might be his posture or even that red sweater he was wearing. I could swear it looks exactly like mine. Sorry for threatening you with a bat. Uh, it's alright. If it makes any difference, I wasn't really going to hit you. The shape of my glasses finally registered in my hand and I fished them out. I don't really think I can hurt anyone, even in this situation. Sarah has always said, the world gained clarity as I put the pair of glasses over my eyes. Someday, kindness is going to kill me. So, uh... You can see me now. 
Hi. The man waved lamely. I stood there with my jaw agape, staring at him. He... was me. Existing as a separate being. He had my face, hair, my posture, my sweater. No wonder that sweater looked like mine. It was mine. This is... just a dream, it's just a dream, that's it. Calm down, don't lose your head, relax. No matter how many times I said it though, the gravity of the situation refused to stick. The room felt simultaneously constricting and vast, like being squeezed and let go again and again. I felt like I was a child again, lost in a crowd, blindly reaching for my mother's hand. Only to realize in horror that the hand belonged to a stranger. Ah! Okay. Now, it's your turn not to panic, right? Deep breath! Was he some kind of clone? An apparition of my future? What? What? What exactly was he? I reached out to touch him, wanting to make sure he was real and not some figment of imagination. The other Mike recoiled from my touch and pushed my arm away. Hey, this is weird for both of us. Don't make it worse by being grabby. He looked solid, so he couldn't be a ghost. He could form separate thoughts from my own. And he seemed aware that we were the same person. What are you? Why do you have my face? Excuse me? Your face? For your information, I was having a normal night in my house when you came barging in here. So why don't you tell me what you're doing in my living room? I opened my mouth to argue, but once I did, I realized I couldn't remember anything. My last bits of memory consisted of a bowl of chips and late night TV shows. Also, a pain at the back of my head. I... I can't remember. Aha! See? That's what all fakes say. Case closed. Fake? Excuse me? There's some sort of anomaly. It's the only explanation. I don't remember doing anything special recently. If you have my memories, I'm sure you'll agree. You, on the other hand, lost a chunk of time from yours. So you are either the cause of everything or simply an effect. Ergo, an anomaly. Right. Then if we're going there, I might as well say you're lying about the state of your memories. Normality was disrupted with your presence. Hence, I lost that track of time. Probability that you are the cause and effect of my sudden amnesia is very high. Therefore, you're the fake. There's a plane flying overhead, so forgive me if you guys can hear that. <laughs> you can't prove that. Neither can you disprove it since we will have the same arguments. And go around in circles. I see what you're getting at. It is quite interesting, though, isn't it? Well, yeah. Well, sorta. After all, it's not every day you meet an exact replica of yourself. You make it sound like I'm the copy here. Well, aren't you? Don't start that thing again. This is such a pain in the ass. Don't I know it? What could have caused this? What kind of freak of nature would have sprouted another me? Sure, I should be flattered or something, but I'm hardly clonable specimen material. <sighs> At the very least, he didn't seem... dangerous. There was no animosity or aggression coming from him. I didn't feel any ill will towards him either. But it was strange how we had the same small scar on the chin and even the same pockmarks from teenage acne. I touched my own face on a sudden impulse. I'm still me, right? Just then we heard a door softly opening from upstairs. Oh no, Sarah! Sarah! I knew Sarah heard that noise a while ago. Quick, find somewhere to hide. I'll try to distract Sarah while you crawl out the front door. What? Wait a minute. You're getting rid of me. No, I'm not, okay? We just can't risk having two mics in the house. You know that. Then why don't you leave? Are you kidding? You look like a train wreck. He was right. 
I was filthy. How did that happen? Look, we'll get it all sorted out tomorrow. Who knows, maybe your missing memories might even come back. You're throwing me out of my house. I'm not throwing you out. This is just a temporary arrangement. Let me deal with Sarah tonight, and tomorrow we'll sort out this mess. Just leave for now, okay? Nope. I'm staying here. I stand there with a heavy feeling in my stomach. His suggestion made sense, but my feet refused to move. Why should I hide? Why should I scurry away from my girlfriend in my house? It wasn't right. Faint trickles of anger scratched at my chest. No. Way. What? I'm not leaving. Come on, man. Don't be difficult. If Sarah sees this, this... It will not well end well for either of us. But if there's anyone out here who can help us, it's... Shh. Mikey, it's getting late. Aren't you coming up? Her voice called from the stairs. The living room was dark, and she probably couldn't see us in the dim light. We held our breaths tight in our throats. Uh, I got distracted. Sarah walked towards us, a nonchalant look on her face. Is someone there? It's pretty late for visitors. Uh, is that your brother? Mike stole a glance at me. Listen, Sarah, please don't panic. Oh, my... Sarah, calm down. This is... What the... Okay. I know this looks sort of bad, but... Sort of bad? Mike, I'm staring at two of you. I think we've crossed the threshold of sort of bad a long time ago. This is a trick, isn't it? With some mirrors and shit. It's not a prank, Sarah. This is really happening, and we don't really know what to do. <laughs> Stop! Stop talking! Watching both of you talk at the same time is giving me vertigo. Um, deep breaths? I... I think I need to lie down. Excuse me for a bit. Well, that went better than expected. If you... if by that you mean my girlfriend is ready to pop a stress baby, then yeah, sure. <laughs> what does that mean? I told you this was a bad idea. Hmm. Nah, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. She's a police officer. Oh. Oh. She's used to these kinds of stressful situations, right? I doubt she's used to doppelgangers, but I don't know. I'm not a police officer. I don't think you know what you're talking about. <sighs> Guess we better just deal with it. Mike and I stood in silence, waiting for Sarah to come back. She joined us a couple minutes later, her face grim but composed. It gave me a feeling of normal normalcy during this bizarre situation. Alright boys, I'm a lot calmer now. Now, first order of business. What the flying... <laughs> I have no idea. Start at the beginning then. Well... I heard a noise, and I checked it out. I found somebody stumbling around in the living room. I panicked and took the bat, but I just wanted to scare off the guy. And then I saw him with my face on. I thought I was losing it. But he was making his way upstairs, so I had to confront him somehow. To be honest, I thought of grabbing a crucifix or something. Cute. I don't remember any of that. I just woke up here with an aching head. What's the last thing you do remember? Let's tell the truth. I remember hearing a noise in the kitchen, but I thought it was nothing. I grabbed a beer from the fridge. Then something hit me in the head. Next thing I know, I'm in the living room and this guy was waving a bat at my face. No way. He came in here dragging himself like a drunk. And then he tripped on that stupid carpet. Let's say, ugh, I hate that carpet. And what's with that smirk? Like you never tripped on that carpet yourself? Ugh. My sister gave us that carpet out of the goodness of her heart. That explains so much. Hmm. <laughs> so, 
I have a feeling there's another issue here, though. Are you guys trying to outreel each other or what? Well, there can't be two Mike Jansons, can there? Maybe you could help us figure it out? Huh? Decide which one of you is real? Yeah. Like how exactly? Oh, I don't know. Ask us some personal questions or whatever. <laughs> hey, yeah, why not? Maybe one of us will slip up. Right, because you want to treat this like a trivia game. Look, guys, I don't think that's gonna work. You can't just decide the realness of somebody in one night of 20 questions. We have to find another way. Like what? Blood sampling? DNA tests? An exorcism? I don't know. Just please, don't make me choose between the two of you. Sarah, I'm... We're aware this is unfair, but if there's one person who can help us, it is you. Mikey, you do know I love you, right? We've been together a long time. I know your <laughs> bowel patterns and your unhealthy fanboy obsession with Jason Statham. Well, that's... Okay. No, no judgment. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think literally anyone is cut out for this shit. Why don't we just call out your mother? Call your mother. No! Oh, even your reactions are the same. Impressive. Baby bunny, please? Please? I'm not gonna read that out. I'm not gonna read that. You guys can read that. Stop. Didn't I tell you that nickname is only between the two of us? Um, technically it's still just me, so... Oh my god. That is so thin creepy. One thing's for sure, we do have to fix this. It's just too damn weird. So will you help us? Sarah sighed and shook her head. I don't think I get a say either way. It's at least worth a shot. Wait, after this is over, what are we gonna do with the supposed imposter? Have you guys thought about that, little Jim? I'm sure we'll figure something out afterwards. You... Yeah, let's think about it later. Yeah, let's not rush into that conclusion yet. Take it one step at a time. <sighs> okay, whatever. Personal questions it is. Anniversary? February 26, 2009. Let's do 27. February 27th. Huh? Well, it was midnight. So technically, it was the 27th. Hmm. <laughs> Devil's in the details. Too easy. Brother's name? Miles Jordan Jansen. He hates it. Yeah. Well, she said it was the brother thing earlier, so I'm guessing. Miles Jordan Jansen. And exactly why I call him that every chance I get. Right on. You guys are being very mature. Anyway, favorite animal. I'm starting to sound like the worst dating website in history. Dogs. Hyenas or dogs? Let's do hyenas. Hyenas, man. Hyenas are cool. Oh, yes, they are. Are you guys kidding? That is so random. I was just watching a feature on them in Animal Planet. Before all this... But they're so cool, and wicked smart, too. There might even be a rerun tonight. Maybe we should watch it. Oh, good god. Okay, that's it. I don't think this is working. Hey, wait. Let's take turns. What if he's just leeching off my answers? I kind of was, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I resent that. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Tell me a secret you haven't told me before. All right, well, I'm gonna tell the truth. But that's why it's a secret. I can't tell you. Honey, is it about my cooking? Uh, uh, I don't know. Same question. Uh, Sarah, I love you, but that last tuna roll cast, two <laughs> that last tuna casserole you cooked sucked like. <laughs> giggle. I'm gonna giggle about it. Or snick her. Ah. So it takes a clone of you to pop up before you admit to it, huh? 
but... Next question. Now we're getting somewhere. At least one of you has to be telling the truth. Let's go back to let's revisit that uh, tuna casserole. If you make that, what is wrong with you? I will shame, I will shame that. I don't even, I don't eat meat and I, I have a feeling that tuna is part of that reason why. <laughs> it's just so icky. Okay, anyways, after my personal opinion was inserted without anyone asking, let's continue. At least one of you has to be telling the truth. Why? <laughs> so, Mike, what's wrong with the casserole? Let's tell the truth again. Um, okay. Well, there was way too much chili. First of all, my bottom was on fire for days. It was horrible. The texture, too. <laughs> I don't know. Just felt like eating barf. I mean, it looked like barf, it tasted like pure death, and the smell of the kitchen afterwards? I thought something really did die. Shh, shut up. Shut up. But, but, but other than that, all that, it's okay. The plates had a nice floral pattern. <laughs> the plates? Anything else? You were on a roll there. Uh, that's all. Oh, on the other hand, you make great pizza lids. I liked the macaroni. Yeah, those were good too. The macaroni was a microwave meal. In short, you like none of my cooking, you lying ass. <laughs> That's not nice going, Mike. At this point, she'll throw both of us out. All right then, more questions. Do you have a crush on our neighbor? What? Who? Paris Beaufort. Beaufort? 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 The model who sunbathes naked on Sundays. What? That's... Sarah? What even are these questions? I'm just making full use of this situation, Mikey. Wouldn't you? Besides, I'm having fun. Tell the truth. Ask him first. So that's a yes. No? Uh, she's... She's pretty, okay? You both are. But you're my soulmate. Hm. She's friendly. I've talked to her a few times. She was nice. What? Hm. I mean, she wasn't intimidating, didn't try to bite my head off or anything. Oh, sure. And the fact that she flashes her jewels around the neighborhood has nothing to do with her being nice. I didn't even know that. You should call me next time she does. <laughs> Go. Well, this has been very educational. Anything else you want to tell me? I'm, I'm going to keep telling the truth. Paris before, we're just call her Paris B, is as dumb as a brick. <laughs> I'm sorry, but she is. She's a sweet girl, but dude. Poor girl even thinks England is in Africa. Also, if you try sunbathing in a polluted, overpopulated, middle-class residential area with low walls, chances are you are a little soft in the head. Huh, that's true. <laughs> anyway, going back to the dilemma at hand. We didn't really make any progress, if you ask me. I still don't know which of you, which one of you is which. Why don't we just flip a damn coin? Let's tell the truth again. Hey, you know, I'm all for that. I might get lucky. Right. I hardly think that's a good idea, though. Of course not. But at this point, I'm really at a loss. We still have to decide, though. Sigh. <sighs> Fine. If you are the real Mike, what do you suggest we do with the imposter? That's difficult. Um, if I'm the real Mike, then I should stay Mike, right? The other one has to leave. Go out in the world and find their own identity. The world is big anyway. I agree with that. But I'm the one who's staying. Are you the real Mike? Of course I am. Is this the one of your weird question thingies? Just answer. Well, let's tell the truth. Yes, I am the real Mike. How about you? Are you the real Mike? I am. Prove it then. Convince me. Um, okay. Bit awkward, but I am Mike. Heart and mind. It's the only thing I know, really. I wouldn't know what else to say. We both did our best, yeah. Like he said, we answered your questions. It's the most thing we can do for now. But you need to believe me when I say I'm the real Mike. What are you gonna do if I ever say you're the fake? I don't know. I can't leave. 
I don't want to. All right, I think I just need to ask one last question. Sarah turned to me. Mike, yes? Do you know the date? Uh, June 15th. Actually, it's already June 16th. That means whatever caused all this to happen yesterday night. Can you remember anything? Not really. Not even a little bit? I I'm sorry, I've tried, but the last thing I can remember is feeling very tired and falling asleep in front of the TV. That span of time is crucial. It's the missing piece to the mystery. Either that's when you started to exist, or you are not telling us something. <gasps> started to exist? Is it just me, or am I getting the feeling that I'm the odd one out? <laughs> We're just trying to help. You're probably a victim, too. What is this? So both of you have agreed that I am the fake? When was this arranged? You did just appear out of thin air, Mike. You're the stranger who barged into the house. Added to that, you have no memory of yesterday's events. It just doesn't make sense. You don't make sense. My chest felt heavy at Sarah's words. This can't be happening. Everything is turning against me, even Sarah. What do you want me to say? I've already told you everything. Yesterday I went to work, came home, dozed in front of the TV, and then woke up here. I've already said this. Well, how did you get here? Did you walk? Did you take the bus? Did you ride a rainbow unicorn? Facts, Mike. I need to know facts. Guys, calm down. Seeing the two of you fight is just freaky. I really can't remember, okay? If I could, I have no reason to hide it. I've been nothing but honest since I got here. Maybe it is selective amnesia. That is not a reason, just an excuse. I know, I'm Mike. Please, believe me. What if you're a clone and you have no idea? What? A clone? I... You wouldn't know any better. A clone. Was that possible? Was I just disillusioned? Maybe my desire to be Mike fabricated my memories and led me here. Maybe I blocked out the last hours in my mind because I didn't want to know the truth. My head began to throb with frustration. I turned to Sarah. The hope I needed was nowhere in her eyes. Sarah, please. I I'm sorry. It's just... I stood there dumbfounded, a drowning man robbed of his final lifeline. I looked at Sarah and Mike, but they both avoided my eyes. I never felt so alone. Fear surged in my blood. It turned into betrayal and anger. How could Sarah let me down? I need her the most right now. But she wouldn't listen to anything beyond her theories. How right could she be anyway? This was just a matter of choice and opinion. And the truth was just sharp as it was simple. She just chose not to believe. Me. My teeth gritted. I thought I could count on you, Sarah. I thought you wouldn't let me down. Don't say that. You don't know how hard this is for me. Oh yeah, I'm having a ball. Stop villainizing me, Mike. I've done what you asked. No, you didn't. You just jumped to conclusions and refused to listen to me. You said one night of trivia questions wouldn't be enough, but you turn around and just like that accuse me of hiding something. That's not fair. Fair? Fair? Right. That sounds rich coming from you, Mike. Stop. You're hurting her. I know nothing about this is easy, but I think you have to take a step back. We'll help you, okay? But the way things are going, emotions are running really high. We should all take a breather from this. Why don't you just come by again tomorrow and we'll figure it out? What? You want me to leave? No, well... I'll leave too if you want. Shut up, you're just trying to get rid of me again. I didn't mean it like that, it just... I didn't... Hmm, calm down or attack. Let's calm down. It was difficult, but I managed to quell my emotions and get it under control. My face was flushed. My head throbbed and my vision spun. But a few deep breaths in, I began to compose myself. I looked at Mike and Sarah. The atmosphere in the house was tense and palpable. The uneasiness warmed its way into my heart. It was bringing out the worst in me. I couldn't stay. All right, I get it. I'll leave. Sarah's face twitched. There was a ghost of concern on her face. 
You... You don't really have to. Concern, yes, but there was also a coldness in her eyes that broke my heart. Shallow charity was the most she could give the man with her boyfriend's face. It was that distant feeling you have for a tragic accident on the morning paper. I couldn't bear to see her look at me like that. I shook my head. No, I'll leave. There's a motel, a taxi right away with my name on it. Let me just bump some cash and I'm good to go. I gave out a bit of forced laughter to hide the regret in my voice. Now that I've said it, I wish I didn't. Let Sarah insist, please. Just one more time, let her say I can have one more time. But she didn't. And maybe it was just all, just as well. It's better for all of us. I sighed with finality. Um, if it will make any difference, I'll leave too. Maybe it's fair that way? I offered him a bitter smile. I wouldn't leave Sarah alone after this, and neither should you. Just keep an eye on her tonight, all right? Oh, okay. Hey, try, try to get some rest. It'll get better tomorrow. Thanks. I needed time to think, gather my thoughts, and make sense of the situation. Maybe they were right. Those couple of hours that my memory missed might hold the key to unlocking the mystery. Tomorrow, I'll find out. As I passed by a store window, I noticed my reflection. What? Was it just me, or did I suddenly look thinner? A sharp pain squeezed my heart as the thought crossed my mind. My chest heaved in erratic rhythms, in dizzying bursts. My legs buckled from the pain. What? Blood dripped from my nose. What? Something was happening to me. I have to get back. I shouldn't have left. Sarah. But already my vision undulated and knocked me off my feet. Sarah. I need to find somebody to help me. H help me, Sarah. Sarah. Her name appeared in my mind over and over again. I didn't know why, but it was like I wanted to desperately cling to it. I looked around. Where am I? Why, why can't I remember how I got here? Ugh. My chest. It hurts. Difficult to breathe. Sarah. Sarah. Who? Oh. Guys. So we got the innocent ending. All right, guys. That is it for Who is Mike? We got the innocent ending. And I really enjoyed this uh, visual novel. Um, I think it was really good and interesting, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Thanks for sticking around this long, and I'll see you next time. Bye!